Okay, we're at um, BBC Six Music Studios with John Holmes. This is um, for the CSR John Pigeon Speech Awards. That's right. Um, so, what was your like first experiences with like speech radio? What did you listen to? Um, what did I listen to? Um, that's uh, now mm, that's that's interesting. Um, I guess the first thing I ever listened to well wasn't. Um, speech radio, it was of course music radio, it was sort of, uh, it was Radio 1 I guess was the first thing I did, but, I, but what I found myself interested in very quickly was the bits between the records, because you know, I'd got, I'd got records and so I could play them if I wanted, but what I hadn't got was, you know, Steve right in the afternoon sitting in my lounge or whatever yeah. it was, you know so I had that, and I was thought, well this is quite interesting because they're not, they're using the music in and around speech, um, and, and so I was kind of interested in, in that and then when I found out, like, there were speech radio networks like Radio 4 who have cushions like this? <laughs> um, I, 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 I was really fascinated, so I went back sort of and then bought albums, comedy albums of, of, of um, you know things like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Radio Action yeah. and stuff I'd heard of but not heard on the radio because I was too young to have been there when it actually happened. So um, I came to, to speech radio through records, and for those of you too young to remember what records are, records were like flat black MP3s that you put on a special machine. Um, so that's that's how I got into it really. So I guess it was things like Hitchhikers and Kenny Everett stuff. Because um, you 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 did stand up. I don't know if you still do. Little bit, yeah. yeah. Little bit. I now my, wherever I do that now, I, I do it for the Now Show on Radio Four. So yeah. that's kind of like that's my stand up shouty out there. When did you start with um, the Now Show? When did that? Oh, good lord, that was about nineteen ninety. That was about eleven years ago now. <laughs> wow, we're on series thirty five, I think, or something at the Now Show. Now. Really? Shows you how long. Is that one of the longest? It's been going. It's becoming that way. Yeah, it's not the longest, but it's it's getting there. Yeah. It might beat the archers one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we often do beat the archers, but that's physically with sticks. Uh, when we just go around to their studio and attack them, uh, it just keeps us all yeah, keeps all busy. Um. So why do you like speech radio so much? Well, it's I guess it's it's what it can do. I mean, it's it's what I love about radio is its power. To, it's not broadcasting, it's called broadcasting, but it isn't broadcasting. TV is broadcasting because you're, you're broadcasting broadly. You're, you're doing it to people just sitting there watching you. But, but with radio, if you listen to the radio, it's like they're talking to you personally. And that's yeah. the beauty of it. And that, that comes from everything from doing a DJ show, like Six Music or Radio 2 stuff that I've done. Or, um, in terms of speech radio, it's, you, know, you're in, you create a world that you, you're in. You get into the world of it. And, and telly doesn't have that, that kind of magic touch, I think. And... and and the immediacy of radio as well, so you can have an idea and then very quickly it can be on air. Yeah. Um, and, and very powerful because all you've got to play with is sound and silence, that's it. And both are as powerful as each other, used correctly. And that's why it's sort of, sort of fascinating, that's why speech radio is such a good thing. I suppose the thing with radio is that you've got more chance to experiment, like say with TV, because the budget's so much bigger for something you can't... Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, I often say this, but if you want to be... You know, if you have an idea and go, I, I don't know, uh, I'd, what I'd like now to happen is for the Queen Vic to be hit by a meteorite um, and then the bits, of the bricks from the Queen Vic uh, uh, sort of coalesce together uh, and be, uh, become a robot, like a, like a brick transformer, but in the shape of um, Phil Mitchell. <laughs> right? And you go, whoa. Now, if I give that to somebody on uh, TV, they'd go, yeah. Let's let's not do any of that. Let's just have someone go out the pub and buy a drink. Uh, but on the radio, of course, you can do that with some sound. Yeah, I was, I was then thinking about really, how I'd do it. And yeah, and all you go is right. We're going to make that then, and you can. Yeah, and it's great to be able to do that. So the, it's kind of, and that's why you know it's a cliche. I know, uh, that, and you'll know it. But the, the pictures on radio are better, right? That's what everyone says, and they are because you're making them up yourself. And and speech radio, you know, kind of has the power to do all that. So, so yeah, it's you know, it's. I think you know, good good radio will move you more than television will. Um, so moving on to the John Pigeon Awards um, mm. first, like, uh, what are the John Pigeon Awards like for people who don't know what it is? Uh, John Pigeon, um, uh, despite his name, is not a pigeon. <laughs> uh, he is a former head of this d department we sit in now, um, uh, former head of, of BBC Radio Comedy, and um, certainly for me was a you know a, a great influence on me and got me in to doing what I do now full time um, but he sort of created shows like The Mighty Boosh and Little Britain and Dead Ringers and stuff were all under John's tenure here um, and so he's a great advocate of radio and a great lover of radio um, and, and wants to encourage people to 
to make good radio, and that's why the awards are in his name, unrightly so. Um, and I'm just sort of you know helping out, saying, yeah, he's right, yeah, <laughs> make great, make radio. Um, and ironically, we're filming this. <laughs> this will be played out on the radio yeah, as well. Fine, for fine. the audio as well, that's great. <laughs> um, so, what? Um, why should people actually like do the awards, like um, write the scripts and um, produce? Um, because if you want to get into the industry, you know, it's a, it's a tough, it remains a tough industry to get into. And if you win, you know, if, you, if you're nominated, if you enter, if you, you know, you, you just, it's, it's a platform to let people who are interested in wanting to get into radio do something about it. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a goal to aim at. It's a, um, you know, if you want to write, you know, you, people who want to write have a burning desire to write. You know, you're going to write anyway because it's in you. So you might as well do it for a reason and win a thing. Uh, so uh, you know it's a it, it's it's just a good platform into the industry, and you'll get to get the, you know you, you you make the program, but then it'll open up doors for you later on. You know, and you might be well, I won a thing, and then you, you just don't know where it'll lead. So it's an opportunity. Grab every opportunity, right? So that I've noticed with a few people like trying to get them into it is that they've been more interested in like writing for TV, but then things like the Mighty Boosh. Little Britain, what people don't realise is that yeah. they all started on the radio. Yeah, yeah, most, I mean, you know, a, a great number of comments. Have I got news for you? Started on the radio. Really? You know, yeah. yeah, Room 101, you remember that? With, yeah. That's coming back actually with Frank Skinner. That started on Radio 5. Um, Dead Ringer started on Radio 4. Little Britain started on Radio 4. Miranda's show, Miranda's Radio, uh, that was on radio 4. Com, radio 2. Yeah. Wow. Most, League of Gentlemen, Radio 4. But, okay, you know, okay. And most talent that you and writers started their craft. On radio, that's uh, a writer being executed. Uh, you hear that? <laughs> um, so your joke wasn't good enough. <laughs> um, the uh, most writing talent, as well, would have started out that you'll be familiar with. Um, David Baddiel, Rob Newman, um, also Mary, Mary, Mary Watts Experience, because started out on radio. Hancock started out on radio. You know, many TV writers that you'll know about and you'll want to be and emulate all began their careers in radio yeah. because of the freedom it gives you. So it's a great. I was going to say training ground. It's not a training ground. It's it's a great ground to play in. So yeah, it's, that's why it's important. I suppose it's just a safer way for um, like the people above, like say John um, Pigeon, to realise that your the Mighty Boosh is good enough to finally make it to TV. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, TV's hungry for ideas. You know, that, that's the, that's the long, long and short of it. And most ideas. Are so uh, that what they'll do is they'll come to radio and go, well, these programmes work, how do we make them for television? Um, at the moment, um, Just a Minute, which is a massively long-running Radio 4 show with Nicholas Parsons, Paul Merton, and, and so on and so forth, that's about to go to telly um, for, uh, for its anniversary specials. So that's another oh, example. Right. They're going to put it on, on uh, I think it's BBC, I could ask actually, the producers just over there. But is, um, is it BBC One or Two? Two, BBC Two. There you go, um, and it's going to go on to on, on TV. So it's a, it's a, you know it's it, it, it's kind of a two way street. It's it's not a very fast moving two way street, but, but no, for those wishing to who are interested in it, you know it's a, it is a good way. Um, so what are you going to be looking for in um, people's scripts uh, in the John Pigeon world? Well, it's you know it's, it just comes down to, um, to 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 good writing and and then a good execution of it when they've made it. I mean that's the that's the gist of it really. It's a uh, you know, you don't know what you, you. I'm not looking at you, proud for anything particular. You just go right, okay, m make me laugh. Uh, you know, make me make me gasp, amuse me, uh, shock me, whatever. You know, whatever genre you're writing. Um, you know, I'm just you're kind of just looking for originality and some talent, really. I guess that's what, that's what it comes down to. It. So, you know, if you if you if you want to do it, say so it's an opportunity, go for it. Yeah. Um, and uh, more personally, uh, what's like the best bit of speech radio that you've ever heard? Uh, <laughs> good lord. So the best bit of out. speech radio I've ever heard. Keep it clean, John. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't know that was promise it was going to come. <laughs> um, the best bit of speech radio I've ever heard. God. Um, I don't know, that's quite hard, I think. It's... I don't know, it's... it's because there, there are so many different things. Because there are plays that I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there are the comedies. I think that's amazing. So it's, it's kind of a difficult um, thing to do. I know, I know what it is. I know what the, the bit that makes the bit of speech radio that makes me happiest in the world, right, um, is the closing credits to quote unquote. When that's over, everyone's happy. Quote <laughs> 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 um, Is it easier to ask what's the favourite 
bit of speech radio that you've made. No, that's even harder. <laughs> uh, I w- I'll say, just to promote it, that it's the new series of Listen Against that starts on November the 3rd. Listen Against, I don't think that's the third, uh, Well, what sort of radio person are you, then? <laughs> um, uh, One who hasn't listened to Listen, listen Against. Listen obviously. Um, uh, November the 3rd, 6.30, uh, Radio 4. There. Funny. <laughs>